In this video, we're gonna look at how C and C++ advocates are coping with all this memory safe discussion and what these developers are doing to actually make C and C++ memory safe. So we've covered this before on this channel, but there's a big push by the US government, the CISA and the FBI in particular, to move away from C and C++ to more memory safe languages like Rust. In fact, there's actually now a deadline in place, not a strictly enforced deadline, but a plan to have certain priorities in place by a certain time. As we see here on the CISA.gov website, for existing products that are written in memory unsafe languages, not having a published memory safety roadmap by January 1st, 2026 is dangerous and significantly elevates risk to national security, national economic security, and national public health and safety. And their recommended action is here. Software manufacturers should build products in a manner that systematically prevents the introduction of memory safety vulnerabilities, such as by using a memory safe language or hardware capabilities that prevent memory safety vulnerabilities. Additionally, software manufacturers should publish a memory safety roadmap by January 1st, 2026. So this has caused a huge debate and lots of criticism from the C community. And whenever I've mentioned this in the past, I've gotten killed by the hardcore C and C++ crowds as if I'm saying you're bad programmers, the language is bad, or something silly like that. I'm just stating the news here. C and C++ are great languages. At the same time, Rust is a great language also that offers great safety guarantees via its borrow checker. Both can be true. C is good. Rust is good, and yes, many underlying packages and memory safe languages are written in C. Gotcha. What's also true, though, is that Microsoft reported that around 70% of all vulnerabilities in their products addressed through security updates each year are memory safety issues. Google found that approximately 70% of serious security bugs in the Chromium project are memory safety problems. Mozilla reported that out of 34 critical slash high bugs they analyzed, 32 or 94% were memory related. Google's Project Zero team found that 67% of zero-day vulnerabilities used in the wild were memory corruption vulnerabilities. And we could go on and on. So there is an issue with memory safety vulnerabilities that needs to be addressed. Buffer overflows, use after free vulnerabilities, stack and heap exhaustion, memory leaks, no pointer dereferences, dangling pointers, things like this. But many C and C++ developers do not want to have to learn Rust, and many think that Rust sucks. It's pointless, it's not completely safe, and it's not without its flaws. It's difficult, and to redo code bases in Rust is a pain. They love C and they want to continue using it, not have to learn a new language. And I get it. Rust is different and really, aside from the memory safety, doesn't offer a major advantage over what they're used to and familiar with. Therefore, some are beginning to discuss or even implement how to bring memory safety into these C languages. Instead of having to leave them, they want to add memory safety to them. And today I wanna to look at three solutions that are either out now or are in the works to bring memory safety to C or C++. Let's take a look. So the first of these is called the Safe C++ Project. While many C++ developers can acknowledge the memory safety issues, they also argue that trying to move everything away from C++ is a monumental task. It's unrealistic. So instead of trying to do that, why not try and extend C++ for safety to create a superset of C++ that exhibits the same strong safety guarantees as code written in Rust. In fact, much of what is being proposed seems to be taken from Rust concepts. Key features of the safe C++ proposal includes a new safe context where only a rigorously safe subset of C++ is allowed, borrow checking to prevent use after free bugs, initialization analysis for type safety, pattern matching, choice types and borrowing, thread safety features similar to Rust's send and sync type traits, explicit mutation for references, and a model for object relocation. And the goal is to do all this while maintaining performance and zero cost abstractions. And it's more than just best practices, it's actually a new technology for ensuring memory safety, including compile time intelligence. This is a work in progress and nowhere near being implemented or even having a clear design yet, but you can read the detailed proposal in a day. I'll put a link to that below. Now the second solution is actually already out and ready to use. But before we look at that, let's hear really quickly from today's sponsor, Brilliant, an app that can help you master the underlying fundamentals of software development and even has hands-on 
some exercises to refresh you on what we're talking about today, how computer memory works overall. Brilliant.org is a great way to learn math, logic, and computer science interactively. Brilliant's fun, practical, and has thousands of lessons from computer science and programming, algorithms, Python, data, logic, and other tools to help you level up your skills. And it's built for busy people like me and you. Like I said, you can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day, and it's a much better use of your time than mindless scrolling. Maybe you want to dive deeper into large language models, neural networks, big data, or just learning the basics of Python, building programs on day one with their built-in drag-and-drop editor. Today I did a section on how computer memory works, from how signals are stored and carried along by wires, I learned about switches, capacitors, and how these are used to create memory cells. Brilliant helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also, in the process, become a better thinker overall. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash travismedia or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now back to the video. Okay, like I said, our second solution is already out and ready to use, and it's called Phil C. Phil C. This was created by a Philip Pislow, Senior Director of Language Engineering at Epic Games. He's created his own memory safe flavor of C. He says it aims for 100% compatibility with C and C++. Just compile your stuff with my compiler and you'll get memory safety. The C and C++ programming languages are wonderful. There's a ton of amazing code written in both of them, but C and C++ are unsafe languages. Simple logic errors may result in an attacker controlling where a pointer points and what is written into it, which leads to an easy path to exploitation. Lots of other languages, Rust, Java, even JavaScript, don't have this problem. But I love C, and I love C++ almost as much. I grew up on them. It's such a joy for me to use both of them. Therefore, in my spare time, I decided to make my own memory safe C and C++. This is a personal project and an expression of my love for C. He goes on to say there's no escape hatch like you get with Rust and being able to use unsafe whenever you want. You can't even link to unsafe libraries. Most programs will run and compile with zero changes needed. Now some caveats, it only works on Linux currently and it's about 1.5 to 5 times slower than legacy C, but the speed is being further addressed as we speak and the aim is to get it to 1.2 times slower speeds. That's the aim. Part of the reason why I'm doing this is that I want to obviate the need for Rust. I'm not there yet performance-wise, but I will get there. I'll put a link below if you want to see a talk where he actually demos it, but it's available now to use, and I'm not saying this is the end-all solution, but it's a start. And the third solution being worked on is called Trap C. Trap C is a newly proposed memory safe variant of the C programming language announced by Robin Rowe at the W2140 conference in Bangkok, Thailand in November 2024. Again, I'll have a link below to that talk if you're interested. It's actually a fork of C and a new language overall that resembles C and C++ closely. So think of it as a memory safe fork of C. And it aims to create a memory safe version of C that prevents common vulnerabilities like buffer overflows, segmentation faults, and memory leaks. It's designed to be link compatible with C using the same ABI or application binary interface. And some safety features include pointers cannot produce seg faults or buffer overruns, automatic memory management to prevent leaks, no unsafe keyword, and the syntax resembles C and C++ code, making it potentially easier for C programmers to adopt. And it differs from C in that it includes C++ constructors and destructors, it removes some rarely used keywords like union, and it implements automatic bounds checking and pointer nullification. So overall, it looks like the C crowd is not looking to learn a new language, but aiming to make this language memory safe in some way or another. So I'm not a C or a C++ expert, but many of you are. I'd love to hear what you think about it below. Leave me a comment. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.